People often want to ask me as a pastor, how do I make my church grow? Business leaders come to me and say, how do I get my business growing? People who are in parachurch or in non-government organizations or, or ministries, they say, how do I get my, my club to grow? Do not worry about growth. Worry about health. All living things grow. I don't have to command my children to grow. Mm -hmm. I don't have to say, I, I, I command you to grow. No, if they're healthy, <laughs> growth is automatic. So what makes health? Balance. And if you're going to be a leader, you must learn to not only balance your life, but you must balance your ministry, your, your business, your family, whatever, according to the purposes of God. Now, how can I remember what God wants me to do with my life? Well, there are many, many places. The purposes of God are explained in Acts chapter 2, and Paul explains them in Ephesians 4, and Jesus prays about them in John 17. But you can summarize them real simply in a little sentence. A great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission will grow a great person. Let's say that together. A great, great commitment, commitment to the, the great, great commandment, commandment and the great, the great commission will grow a great person. Let's say it again. A great, great commitment, commitment to the great commandment and the great commission will grow a great person. It'll also grow a great church. It'll also grow a great corporation. It'll grow anything great if you make a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission. Jesus summarized all we're to do with our lives in two basic commandments, commandment and commission. First, he says in the great commandment, the guy walks up to him one day and says, what's the most important commandment? He says, okay, here's this. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, what is that? Love God with all your heart. The Bible word for that is worship. Worship. Anytime I love God with all my heart, I am worshiping God. And so it doesn't matter if I'm with myself, uh, with my husband, my wife, with a group or with a thousand people, anytime I'm expressing love to God, I am worshiping God. And that's the number one purpose of life, to learn to love God with all your heart. God knows and loves you, and he wants you to know and love him back. That's the number one thing. And the Bible says in Timothy, some people have missed the most important thing in life. They don't know God. That's worship. Then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible word for that is ministry. And when we talk about servant leadership, we're talking about ministering. Did you know that in the Bible, the word minister and serve are the same word? And the word minister, or ministry and, minister and serving are the same word? And to be a servant, to be a minister is the same thing. So you could say, I'm a servant. In fact, turn to the person next to you and say, I'm a servant. I'm a servant. I'm a servant. Now turn to the person next to you and say, I'm a minister. I'm a minister. Love God with all your heart. That's called what? Worship. Let's say it. Worship. Worship. Okay. And then you love your neighbors yourself. And what's that? Ministry. Ministry. Serving God and serving others. Loving God and loving others. That's two of the purposes of life. Then there's the Great Commission. He says, I want you to go into all the world and make disciples. Now there's a word for that. It's a word misunderstood today and misused and misbranded. It's the word evangelism. Now some people think of evangelism as somebody who has big hair. <laughs> and says things like, say, baby. <laughs> you know, Out, foul spirit of nicotine. No, 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 that's not it. Evangelism. <laughs> Evangelism just means sharing good news. That's all it means. It's the Greek word for sharing good news. And all of us are called to share the good news. Go make disciples. And then he says, I want you to teach them to do everything I've commanded you. What's that? The Bible word for that is discipleship. And he says, I want you to reach people, then I want you to teach people. I want you to bring them in, and then I want you to help them to grow. And right in the middle of that, he says, oh, and by the way, I want you to baptize them. Now, why does he say that? Because the Christian life is more than just believing. It's belonging. Mm -hmm. You see, we all walk around saying, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. You're more than a believer. You're a belonger. You belong in God's family. And the Bible says you identify yourself it's just by being baptized. And of course, there are many different ways that churches do that. But the bottom line is we're not just believers. We're meant to be a part of a family. Now, as a leader, what do you want to do with people? You want to help them do the five purposes of God in their life. 
You want to bring them into Christ and the family of God. You want to build them up to maturity. You want to train them for their ministry. And you want to send them out on their mission. Mm -hmm. We bring them in, we build them up, we train them for, and we send them out. There on page 13, we use a little baseball diamond to, to illustrate this. There's like first base, you bring them in to Christ. And then second base, we build them up to maturity. Then third base, we train them for their ministry. And then fourth base, around home plate, we send them out on their mission. And all at the middle of it is worship, which is bringing glory to God. But the bottom line is this, all of us are called to lead like Jesus and to lead on purpose. We are to live like Jesus, that's the purpose-driven life. And we are to lead like Jesus, that's what we're talking about here today. Mm -hmm. And we do it by helping people go through a process. You don't do it overnight, it's incremental. You bring them in, you build them up, you train them for and you send them out. Now I don't care if you're doing it in a business or you're doing it in a church or you're doing it in a club. You bring them in, you build them up, you train them for and you send them out. And in each of those four areas, you have to lead them in a different way.